What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today we're going to take a look at the second part of the culmination of all this, the fallout of the snap, Avengers Endgame from 2019, starring Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Mark Ruffalo, Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, Don Cheadle, Paul Rudd, Brie Larson, Karen Gillan, Denai Gurria, Benedict Wong, John Favreau, Bradley Cooper, Gwyneth Paltrow, Josh Brolin, Benedict Cumberbatch, Chadwick Boseman, Tom Holland, Zoe Saldana, Elizabeth Olsen, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, Tom Hiddleston, Palm Clementif, Dave Batista, Leticia Wright, William Hurt, Kobe Smulders, Winston Duke, Jacob Batalon, Vin Diesel, Chris Pratt, Samuel L. Jackson, Evangeline Lilly, Tessa Thompson, Renee Russo, John Slattery, Tilda Swinton, Haley Atwell, Marissa Tomei, Taika Watiti, Angela Bassett, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, Linda Cardellini, Frank Grillo, Robert Redford, Kai Simpkins, Natalie Portman, James Darcy, and Stan Lee. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, Today, we're going to talk about the end game, the fallout of yesterday's Infinity War, the true culmination of this 22 film journey that we've been on, that we started on the 4th of July, starting with Captain America, the first Avenger. It's, it's going to be an emotional one, folks, because not only am I going to be discussing this, but after I give the synopsis, I'm going to be joined by none other than Stat Boy himself, Mike Caldwell, to delve a little bit deeper into the end game. Let's get right into it here, shall we? It's been 23 days since Thanos killed half of all life in the universe. When Carol Danvers rescues Tony Stark and Nebula, from deep space, reuniting them with the remaining Avengers, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Thor, Natasha Romanoff, James Rhodes, and Rocket on Earth. They are able to locate Thanos on an uninhabited planet, and they plan to use the Infinity Stones to reverse his actions. But they discover that Thanos has already destroyed the stones to prevent further use. Enraged by these actions, Thor decapitates Thanos. Five years later, in 2023, Scott Lane escapes the quantum realm that he had been trapped in at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp. He reaches the Avengers compound and explains that while everybody else has experienced five years since the snap, for him, it's only been five hours. They come to the conclusion that the quantum realm allows time travel. So they approach Tony Stark in order to help them retrieve the stones from the past to reverse the actions of Thanos in the present. Stark, Rocket, and Bruce Banner, who has since merged Banner's intelligence with Hulk's strength to kind of create this Bruce Hulk, if you will, Professor Hulk. The three of them work together to build a time machine. 
Banner notes, though, that altering the past does not affect the present. Instead, the changes create alternate realities. With the time machine now built, the Avengers begin to recruit the rest of their team. Hulk and Rocket go to visit the Asgardian refugee settlement of New Asgard in Norway and recruit an overweight and despondent Thor, while Natasha goes to Tokyo, Japan, and gets Clint Barton, who has become a vigilante after the death of his family. Once they pinpoint the periods in time that they must visit in order to gather the stones, the Avengers begin their journey through time. Steve Rogers, Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, and Scott Lane travel to New York, 2012, during Loki and the Chitauri attack. Bruce goes to the New York Sanctum and convinces the Ancient One to give him the Time Stone after promising her that he will return the stones to their proper places in time. Meanwhile, at Stark Tower, Cap retrieves the Mind Stone from Hydra agents Jasper Sitwell and Brock Rumlow, while Stark and Lang's attempt to steal the Tesseract, the Space Stone, fails, which allows 2012 Loki to steal it and escape. Steve and Tony then travel to Camp Lehigh in 1970s New Jersey, while Scott and Bruce return to the present. Once in 1970, Stark obtains the Tesseract and encounters his father, Howard, while Rogers steals more Pym particles from Hank Pym so they can return to the present. Meanwhile, Thor and Rocket travel to 2013 Asgard during the events of the Dark World where Rocket extracts the Reality Stone from Jane Foster, while Thor gets encouragement from his mother, Frigga, and retrieves his hammer, Mjolnir. The last group, consisting of Clint, Natasha, Nebula, and Rhodey, travel to 2014 Morag, where Nebula and Rhodey steal the Power Stone before Peter Quill can while Barton and Romanoff travel to Vormir, where the Soul Stone's keeper, the Red Skull, reveals that it can only be acquired by sacrificing a loved one, a soul for a soul. Clint and Nat battle each other to see who is going to make the sacrifice, and Natasha ends up sacrificing herself, allowing Clint to get the stone. When Rhodey and Nebula attempt to return to their own time, Nebula is incapacitated when her cybernetic implants link her past self, allowing 2014 Thanos to learn of his future self's success and the Avengers' attempt to undo it. So 2014 Thanos sends 2014 Nebula forward in time in order to infiltrate the Avengers and prepare for his arrival. When the Avengers reunite in the present, they place the six stones into a gauntlet that Stark, Banner, and Rocket have constructed. Since the stones give off a gamma energy, Banner dons the gauntlet and snaps his fingers with hopes of reversing Thanos' disintegrations. When Clint receives a phone call from his wife, Laura, they realize that it just might have worked. Meanwhile, 2014 Nebula, impersonating her future self, uses the time machine to bring 2014 Thanos and his warship to the present day, which she then uses to destroy the Avengers compound. Present-day Nebula 
is able to convince 2014 Gamora to betray Thanos, but she is unable to convince her 2014 self, so she kills her. Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor begin the battle with Thanos, but they get overpowered until Cap is able to wield Mjolnir and begins to turn the tide. But Thanos comes back and destroys Cap's shield. Thanos summons his army to the battlefield to retrieve the stones, intent on using them to completely destroy the universe and create a new one. Cap hears Sam in his earpiece calling out on your left. As Stephen Strange and other sorcerers begin to open portals, allowing the Avengers, the Guardians, the armies of Wakanda, and others to arrive to the battlefield. The Avengers assemble and begin to take on the army of Thanos. Just as all hope seems that it is lost, Captain Marvel arrives and single-handedly destroys Thanos' warship. Carol retrieves the gauntlet from Spider-Man and is then joined by the other female Avengers, Wanda Maximoff, Valkyrie, Okoye, Pepper Potts in her brand new rescue armor, Mantis, Shuri, Wasp, 2014 Gamora, and Nebula in battle as they work to protect the gauntlet. Thanos is eventually able to overpower Carol and seizes the gauntlet, but Iron Man is able to obtain the stones and uses them to disintegrate Thanos and his army. But the strain of using them kills him. Our film begins to draw to its conclusion with the funeral of Tony Stark, as all of his friends show up to pay their respects. We see Pepper, Happy Hogan, Rhodey, and Morgan, the daughter of Tony and Pepper, Steve Rogers, Peter Parker and his Aunt May, Thor and Hulk, Stephen Strange and Wong, Scott Lane, Hope Van Dyne, Hank Pym, and his wife, Janet, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Quill, Drax, Rocket, Groot, Mantis, and Nebula, T'Challa, Okoye, and Shuri, the Barton family, Clint, Laura, Cooper, Lila, and Nathaniel, Wanda Maximoff, Bucky, and Sam Wilson, Harley Keener from Iron Man 3, Maria Hill and Secretary of State Thaddeus Ross, Carol Danvers, and Nick Fury. Thor then appoints Valkyrie as the new ruler of Asgard and joins the Guardians of the Galaxy as Steve takes the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir and returns them to their proper places in time. However, rather than returning to the present day once he's done, Steve stays in the past to live life with Peggy Carter. Once the present day arrives, we see an old Steve Rogers sitting on a log next to the lake on Tony's farm where Bucky encourages Sam to go talk with him. It is here where Steve gives his shield to Sam, making him the new Captain America as our film ends. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to waste no time here. We're going to get right down to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Stat Boy, Mike Caldwell. Stat Boy, thank you for joining me. Welcome. 
Haven't seen you on the network here for a little bit. Yeah, working, working, and working some more. That's all I do is work. Uh, I think the last time we saw you was in May when we were doing the sci-fi stuff, correct? Or did you pop up in Disney? I don't remember. Uh, no, I didn't pop up in Disney. The last thing I popped up on was uh, Star Trek VI. That's right, that's right. You were asking me about Disney because you wanted to know if I was going to get to Beauty and the Beast, your favorite princess. Right. And that's not going to come till next year. That's what it was. Anyways, thank you for joining me. You have been hounding me <laughs> for this. Let me know when you're going to do Endgame. I want to be part of it. <laughs> Let me know when you're going to do Endgame. I want to be a part of it. Stat Boy, we're doing Endgame. Yes, we are. What is it about Endgame that made you want to be a part of this so badly? Basically, the ensemble cast, for one. I mean, when you can get everybody literally in one movie, I mean, just your in your intro alone, you listed like 30 or 40 names, and it took up a good two minutes of the intro. So there's one good good reason right there. Pretty much. Uh, I think the only notable name from the franchises that is not in this is Anthony Hopkins as Odin. Yeah. Rene Russo comes back as Frigga for the first time since Dark World, where she died. Same with Jane. You know, Natalie Portman comes back via a deleted scene that they didn't use for, thar for the Dark World. So she comes back. But, like, he's the only really big name that's been around through these movies that I don't think we had. I mean, some of the minor characters, you know, Michael Pena's Luis isn't there, you know. But as far as our major characters, he's the only one I can think of. Right. Indeed. In fact, it was actually something that Chris Pratt did. Uh, this may have gone viral. He he broke one of the rules of the secrecy of Endgame, and he takes his cell phone out and he does one of those 360 shots, and he has got everybody in the shot. And Chris Evans hammed it up big time. As soon as he saw the phone, he just lets out this big old smile. This this. You know, like that. And you can see a little bit of the behind the scenes. You can see the motion capture suits that um, Tom Holland had to wear. And I believe uh, Zoe Saldana had to wear for her makeup or whatnot. You could tell that they weren't in full costumes. It was all, it was all CGI. And so he put on there, you know, James Gunn is going to fire me or whatever. I don't know. And it, it, was one of the, it was one of the shots that you just won't see in theaters. It's one of those moments where, way to go, Chris. You broke the rules. Good job. And speaking of secrecy, Tom Holland almost got into a ton of trouble because he couldn't keep his mouth shut for a few things, apparently. And uh, it didn't of, happen on the Tonight well, I Show. Mean, it's kind of hard to. You think about it. This, this movie was 22 films in the making. You know, 2019, 11 years of build to get to this point, to get to the end game, if you will. There's so much fan service in this film. There's so much that just makes the crowd pop, you know, to use a wrestling terminology. <laughs> you know, Oh yeah, the, the the scenes of the uh, the theaters when uh, Molnir comes into Captain's hands, or when he finally says, "Avengers assemble," or or the moment that I I broke down, and I know you broke down many times, but the one where I broke down was uh, when uh, uh, T'Challa and Okoye came out and they started the Wakanda war chant. I broke down big time. I was in tears. I was I was yelling Ibambe for 
as however long it was, and just getting that shot over and over again. Portals opening left and right. Everybody you can possibly think of coming through those portals. And, and Wong saying that line, you want more? How many more people do you need for the? I mean, you needed everybody. You couldn't, you couldn't pass up anybody. If you were able to fight, you had to show up and fight. And yet I, there were. I heard there was a rumor that Howard the Duck even made a cameo. But there were people. Howard that, the Duck was in the fight scene before. Yeah, Howard the Duck was there, but the defenders and the agents of Shield were not. They wouldn't have had a chance. If you, if you really think about it, if you think about okay. this. The, you the you want to go there. Natasha Romanoff is a spy. What kind of superpowers does she have, really? Same with Clint Barton. They were on the field. Yeah. Okay, they what fall under Howard the category the of gonna do? What is they, Howard going to do? He Who was knows on the what field. he's going to do. But, so but that's uh, my point. Is like Howard the Duck was there, but Luke Cage, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Punisher, the Agents of Shield, which includes Ghost Rider, at the time had been through there. None of them were there. The very first TV show character to appear in a film actually appeared in Endgame, and it was the actor that played Jarvis, having carried over from Agent Carter in the two years that that lasted. I discovered right. that today. I I realized that, you know, he was from the TV shows, but it didn't dawn on me that he was the first character to cross over from the TV shows. I right. found that kind of interesting. Gotcha. But honestly, the, the character is Hawkeye Black and Widow, Black Widow. When you see Black Widow, you'll understand a little bit more. There's another character that crosses over from the Disney Plus shows into that movie. But still, to date, where are those characters at? Who knows? No one knows. I mean, they should have been there. And you, you talk about how emotional you got with T'Challa and them coming through. You know, I, yeah. I've admitted multiple times. I don't recall if I've admitted this on the air or not, but I was a wreck throughout a good chunk of this film. Oh, yeah. You know, starting from when Captain Marvel saves Tony and Nebula from outer space bringing them back to Earth. You know, after Nebula finally won a competition, all yep. those years that she was there competing with Gamora, and Gamora always bested her, and she finally wins a competition playing the little paper football with Tony in outer space. Yep. You know, I think that it's one of the few moments that kind of gets glossed over in the epicness that follows is Nebula finally was able to win a competition against somebody. Yep. And then, like I said, Carol showing up and saving them after Tony had basically just recorded his farewell speech to Pepper, thinking he was about to die. That, that oh, right wow. there just set me off on the emotions. And then, you know, like... like The only other thing that got me emotional... The, the only thing that got me emotional, of course, is at the, at the funeral with Happy and Morgan sitting there and... Talking like, about... Can I get you anything? And she said, cheeseburgers. I heard her say cheeseburgers, and I'm like, oh, come on. That's just... That got me, and I, I teared up on that one, too. But there is actually a bit of a conspiracy theory about the message, the I Love You 3000, if you've, if you've heard about this. Apparently, that wasn't just a message. That could have been Tony's AI. That could have been Tony's soul, if you will. He somehow figured out sentiments 
because if you if you look, the image is staring right at Morgan. Now we don't know if that's the place because that's the placing of the helmet, or we don't know where the, the the projector was. But how did the the image know where to look? How did the image know where Morgan was going to be? So maybe Tony's not quite gone yet. That's a possibility. That's something that's been talked about that. Tony could basically come back as a new form of Jarvis, essentially, and be the voice in the Iron Man suit when whoever picks up that mantle does so. Or could be the voice inside of Peter's Spider-Man suit. You know, if you remember Homecoming, he called the female voice Karen. But right. there could be a upgraded suit that now has Tony speaking to Peter in the air. It's right. a little way how they could keep bringing Robert Downey Jr. back without resurrecting him as Iron Man, per se. You know, just comes in one day, records a few audio lines of dialogue that they can pipe into the suits. Boom, he's out of there. There you go. And another thing was, um, you said it in the synopsis, that the, the snap that Tony did, sadly did him in, but the suit and the gauntlet could withstand the power of the stones, just not the snap itself. The snap was more powerful than anything, even the combination of all six stones. So he could have somehow used the stones against Thanos, but instead he decided, well, I'm going to take everybody out and I'm going to sacrifice myself doing it, but that just shows shows how powerful the snap was. Exactly. I mean, you think about what happened to Hulk. Right. You know, the strongest Avenger, arguably also the smartest Avenger next to Tony. And yeah. you look at what it did to his arm. I mean, he was in a sling for the rest oh, yeah. of the... Oh, yeah, it should have been. So you can only imagine what it did to... Tony, a mortal who doesn't have gamma radiation through his body. Right. You know, Bruce mentioned how the signature is gamma. And that's why it didn't kill him, I believe. Yeah. It, it's a very scientific movie. I mean, if you think about it, with the, with the possibility of time travel, gamma radiation, energy from the stones, yeah. the nanotech. Is a... over the time travel aspect. <laughs> Too, and how they pay homage to all the great time travel films of the past. I mean, talking about Back to the Future most most specifically, but yeah. also going in Bill and Ted, Hot Tub Time Machine, you know, Star Trek, and all these other movies that have experimented with time travel. Just those little nuggets. Like I said, there was a lot of fan service within oh, this. Yeah. Film. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the the women coming together. That oh, was yeah. another scene that really got me. And I know a lot of fans out there feel that that scene was kind of forced with the whole um, movement that was going in Hollywood about strong female representation. Right. And so they kind of like threw that in there, like, here, shut shut up. Here's all these women teaming up together to take on the big bad. <laughs> I still loved that. Like the minute that um Wanda first showed up, because she was the first one, you know, don't worry. And then Okoye, she's got help. And all of them just start popping up into the scene. He's like, mm, yes, do that shit. <laughs> Kick ass, girls. And they did. They did. I mean, they they held their own against Thanos, the biggest bad that we have seen so far. Now, those yeah, of us I'm that always wondering now. Comics, we know there's a lot of villains that could potentially start popping up in the pipeline. You know, with the addition yeah, but, of Yeah, uh, but they can't match. They, they can't. They can't match. 
this, they can't match the strength and the ferocity of, of Thanos because you know he took, took he took one hell of a beating in both movies in Infinity War and in Endgame they were hitting him with everything you could think of and of course in 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 uh, Infinity War he's like all that for a drop of blood really you're you're hitting him. With, with power blasts, you're hitting him with lightning, you're hitting him with Molnir, you're hitting him with, with whatever power Captain Captain Marvel has. You're you're throwing your shield at him, you're you're punching, you're kicking, you're blasting. He will not go down. I mean, he beat the Hulk. He made the Hulk cry and say, No, I'm not coming out to fight anymore because I can't beat this guy. When you can beat the Hulk, who is supposedly the strongest, and he don't want to come out and play anymore and fight and smash. That's an accomplishment in yourself. He takes it, but he but he's not immortal. I always thought that Thanos was immortal or impervious. I thought you could not hurt Thanos no matter what. But you gotta hit him with everything and more. I mean, I mean, Scarlet Witch had to rip off his armor. Fine. Iron Man had to get a, a lightning boost from from Thor to, to 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 hurt him a little bit. What and then and then of course the snap is what finished him off. So there you go. I mean, nobody can match him villain wise. He is the top villain and he's been beaten. What's gonna happen further with the next phases? Who knows? What more can they do? I'd say they 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 should have stopped, but of course they keep the story going with uh, Far From Home, and now we have another Spider Man movie coming out next year, plus Guardians Three. Who knows where they're gonna go? I have no clue. And that's what keeps us on the edge of our seat coming back for more. Like I said, I mean, Thanos was built the right way. It's all in the build. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're not an avid comic book reader, just like I'm not. Right. So it's all about the build. To use another wrestling terminology, it's all about the push. They can mm -hmm. take one of these other villains, and if they push that character the same way they pushed Thanos the character could become a threat on the same level you've got to think you know we've got Galactus that could be coming our way we've got Fantastic Four right we've, all, we've also got Doctor Doom we've got Magneto and the Brotherhood of Mutants which, if they are played the proper way, could pose a serious threat. You've got um, Cain the Conqueror was introduced in the Loki series, which, just as a note, I haven't watched yet. I need to binge it all still. But, spoiler alert, they've got Cain the Conqueror in there. And supposedly he's being set up to be something major. And there's even videos on YouTube about how Kane has already been within the MCU, even though we haven't seen him. But and how powerful and strong are they? Can they take a beating? Depends on or how they're, they're pushed. It depends on how they're pushed. Because let's, let's look you at You don't always it. have to be a strong villain. Some of the best villains outsmart their competition. Okay, think about that's... think about a parallel to, to the DCEU. Think about an Edward Nigma. Not exactly the most imposing figure, but he's smart as all get out. Yes. He can pull the strings and orchestrate something that's grander than himself. then he becomes just as big and bad and strong by proxy as Thanos was, as a Bane. Yeah, but you walk up you walk up to him, you give him one good punch, and he's down. But what What's you have the fun to go that? through to get to that? Think about everything they had to get through just to get to Thanos. The Battle of New York and the Chitauri Evasion. Thanos' first full-on appearance in Guardians and having to defeat Ronin. The Battle of Sokovia. 
a civil war that almost tore the Avengers apart internally. Yeah. Just to get to Thanos. The Thunderbolts may still play a role. Thaddeus Ross is still involved. The Abomination is supposed to return in She-Hulk, the Disney Plus series. You know? That could be a problem. You've got the Sinister problem. Six that could then pop up still as well. You know? In the Spideyverse, we have still yet to get Norman Osborn. Yeah. The Venom movie is going to have Carnage. You know? He's a tough if, they, if they can tap, they've already made the deal with Sony to get Peter and Spidey, if they can somehow work a deal where Venom and Carnage cross over, the possibilities are endless, my friend. As they went they with the biggest and baddest that they had the rights to at the time. You know, if we were still on speaking terms with him, I'm sure our old buddy Toad could <laughs> rattle off a laundry list of Marvel villains that could still pose a serious threat to the Avengers for Phase 4 and beyond. I can't deny that one. I can't deny that one. So, so, my brother Jay, what is your rating for this movie? <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. You're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. What would you say was your favorite moment? Oh, from damn. If you had to pinpoint one scene, <coughs> one moment, oh, that damn, when you damn. think about Endgame, it's the first thing you think of. It has to be Avengers Assemble. I have to go with, with pop culture. I have to go with seeing the videos and the reactions. It has to be Avengers Assemble, without a doubt. Because the teasing of it all the way back when, when Cap was, was supposed to say it and then the camera cut out, I'm like, oh, come on. I have to wait six more movies before I finally get it. And I was a little disappointed because if you're getting ready to battle somebody – be the whole army. You don't have to whisper it. You should have been screaming it the entire time. I mean, we're talking Avengers. Uh, not Avengers. Assemble. No, you gotta, you gotta really scream that because you gotta get your point across. I think. So I'm gonna go with Avengers Assemble. Wise man once said, "Speak softly, but carry a big stick." <laughs> yeah, well, Cap certainly did that. That may be why he did it. Probably so. Probably. When it comes to me and the moment I think of the most, I probably go back to him wielding Mjolnir for the first time. Because it was teased in Age right. of Ultron, and you thought he was going to lift it, and you kind of saw it move. But was he really oh, moved. not worthy? Or did he fake his ability to lift it. Because there's some people that still believe that at that moment, Cap wasn't worthy because he was still holding the secret of Bucky having killed Tony's parents. Another theory. Good point. But once that got aired out in Civil War and he got that off his chest, the one dark secret that he had been holding he became worthy. Other people feel what that he just threw it and was like, oh, he could have done it all along, but he didn't want to make people feel bad. He didn't want to give it to you too soon, which is why they cut and of course the, look on the Avengers the assemble at the end of Age of Ultron. And of course, the, the look on Thor's face when... Molnir moved that tiniest little bit was priceless. That could have been a meme easily. Very that face you made so. when, 
you know, that face you make. But but I definitely I think I've got to go back to that because Mjolnir raising, and then you see it hit Thanos and come back to Cap's hand. I was like, holy shit <laughs> in the theaters for that one. It was just such a monumental occasion. Honestly, if we're being fair, that entire battle for me is what it comes down to because that is the end game. Yeah. From Cap, Iron Man, and Thor storming the battlefield and beginning it to Cap, once he gets Mjolnir, darn near taking Thanos out on his own. Like, that one-on-one -on -one battle, once he had Mjolnir, made you believe that Cap could do it on his own. He probably could. But then Thanos getting the upper hand, and then Sam on your left, and everybody coming onto the field, and I was a wreck then. Yep. I was in Ears for that because everybody that you thought was gone was finally back. You saw, you know, the fact that they had the cavalry, the cavalry had arrived. Oh, yeah. And they didn't just arrive in a small numbers, they came in droves. Oh, yeah. Indeed. All the way. To all the way to Captain Marvel showing up and obliterating the ship, to the girls assembling themselves, down to Tony's snap and doing the one thing Cap swore he would never do, and that was make the sacrifice play. Right. Because you remember when they had their first confrontation in the Avengers... Cap never thought that Tony would sacrifice himself for the greater good of anybody else, for nobody other than Tony Stark. Exactly. And that's why it had to be him to make that snap. And then likewise, nobody thought Cap would be able to go back and live life and have the happy ending and the wife and the house with the white picket fence, et cetera, et cetera. So for him to go back and get that time with Peggy and show up as an old man with the ring on his finger, you know, and Sam, you going to tell me about her? No, no, I don't think I will. They both got the endings that neither one of them thought that the other would get. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. So... You asked me earlier, when it comes to my rating of Endgame, it should be no surprise, and I think you're going to be right there with me. It's a five-star flick. Yep. The, there is no I wish you're five-star. I wish you could go higher than five stars. <laughs> what are you going to do higher than a five? Like, seriously, five stars is the best. If I was just going on a number rating, it would be a 10 out of 10. And you could maybe make the 11 to get the spinal tap joke in. There you go. Make it 11. <laughs> but five out of five is the best you can do. Exactly. I mean, like you said, where are we going to go from here? And we'll find that out tomorrow 
right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when we discuss Spider-Man Far From Home, which as of yet, as of this filming, I still have not seen this film yet. It is Whoa. the only film that resides in the MCU that I still have yet to see. And that's going to be remedied because I'm talking about it tomorrow. So, you know, I don't really know what happened as to why I didn't get to it. I don't remember why I didn't get to it in theaters. It definitely wasn't COVID because COVID hadn't hit yet then. But I do own it on DVD Blu-ray. I purchased it at Black Friday one year. And I was going to watch it because I want to say last year at some point, I started going through the MCU timeline. And I actually was doing the TV shows integrated with it. So after Captain America, the first Avenger, I watched, watched Agent Carter. And then as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would play into the greater timeline, I would watch those episodes. But it got to a point where one of the TV shows, and I forget which one it was, I want to say The Inhumans or Cloak and Dagger or something, there was a TV show for the MCU that I didn't have access to, so I wasn't able to watch it and keep the timeline moving, so I came to a halt. And that stopped me from seeing Far From Home during that time because I was looking to get all the way up to it and then see what happened. So this is going to be special because it's going to be the first time I've seen it. I'm going to be able to talk about it for you, our fans, our viewers of the show. I'm so looking forward to it. Stat Boy. When are we going to see you back on a full-time basis, good sir? Uh, I believe the date is August 26th. It's okay, going to be the first after it's gonna, my birthday. It's going to be the, uh, the, the week before week one of the new season in the NFL. So uh, Jeff and I are going to be back in the sports bar doing the same old thing. Uh, bringing you the, the football scores and stats like we did. This is now going to be season two of Step, Step Boy Sports Bar, so there we go with that. Um, other than that, it's it's just back to work as always. You know, uh, I don't think I'll be able to watch as much football since I'll probably be working on Sundays, but as long as I get all the stats together and check out the highlights, everything will be fine. So I think August 26th or August 27th, somewhere in there, that, that Tuesday or Thursday, uh, we're going to bring back the uh, Beat Stat Boy contest where uh, you pick the winners. I pick the winners based on the handicap. If you beat me straight out, you get a shirt. And uh, business as usual on the, on the Jeff Meacham very network there. Um, very quickly before we sign off, um, since it's still somewhat topical, are you up to date with, did you see any of the Kraken picks when they took their draft from the established teams? Do you uh, want to no. give your thoughts really quickly on that if you're prepared? Who you got? What, who they got? I didn't see anything. Honestly, they didn't grab anybody that I was expecting. I, If I had been the Kraken, seeing who was on the block, I would have grabbed Getzloff. I would have grabbed P.K. Subban. I would have grabbed Jonathan Quick. None of them got taken from their respective teams. And I think wow. that's insane that those names were up on the picking block, if you will, and none of them got taken. I believe from the Kings they got Curtis McDermott was their pick. Okay. Which, granted, he's younger, so he's going to have a little bit more time, a little bit more legs under him, if you will, whereas Quickie – has definitely got his best days behind him. But it doesn't hurt to have an established, you know, tried and true goalie getting between those pipes to help establish your team and have that veteran right. leadership. Same reason I would have taken Getzloff. You know, he's been the captain of the Ducks for how many years? 
and could have oh, very easily right. transitioned to being the captain of the Kraken. Or at the very least, have him be the alternate if you want to have somebody younger that's maybe going to have more longevity take the C and definitely have him as one of the alternates to help guide the team with his leadership abilities. It's a possibility. It was a good, they thoughts had a good chance. The, thoughts on the fact that none of them got taken? I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. I'm very surprised um, that that didn't happen, but who knows why what didn't happen? I mean, unless <laughs> unless Getsy wants to finish his career as a duck, and Quickie wants to finish his career as a king, that's the only the only reasoning I've got on that. So uh, I'm very surprised that that didn't happen. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to the Milwaukee Bucks. Congratulations, my boy Giannis. Got the got his title. Uh, Triple H sent him the belt. So all of the uh, Attentacumpio brothers are champions now. Good for them. Congratulations to the Lightning going back to back. The NHL uh, Stanley Cup playoffs were wild here in this house. Literally, we we bounced from the Wild to the Knights to uh, to the Lightning. So we bounced all over this all over the league in the playoffs. Because we just couldn't that boy bandwagon, you know. <laughs> wholeheartedly. I, I totally wholeheartedly agree to that. I bandwagon hop all the time. Okay. So well, we will go ahead and wrap it up then here to all my loyal fans and viewers that have been tuning in, watching the premiere, leaving your thoughts and comments over there next to Stat Boy. Thank you for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. All my loyal fans and viewers that tune in a little bit later in the day, watching on demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that tune in on a regular basis and show your love and support for me. Stat Boy, you want to take us out of here? Stat Boy out.